How many times you've lost a customer because your web page took too long to load? In this video, I'm going to show you how to lazy load one of the most impactful web assets, and that is your script. Now, before I'm going to show you the solution, let's actually discuss how your web page load time impacts your revenue. Now, I do have my whiteboard right here, and we're going to go with the very first example, and that is if you are running ads. Let's say that you're spending right now $1,000 into your Google Ads account. From this $1,000, your cost per click, it's about $10. So we're going to put $10 CPC. Now, that would mean that you're getting about 100 clicks on your website. Now let's say that 50% of these users, these clicks right here, they just simply don't have the time to wait for your page to fully load. So they're just simply bouncing back. They're quitting your landing page. That would mean that you're only getting about 50 users and you're also losing 50% of your budget, which is about 500 bucks. Advertising platforms like Facebook, LinkedIn, Google, wherever you're using, they will charge you for whether the impressions or for a specific click. They're not gonna charge you for landing page views for people that waited actually for the page to fully load. And that means that if your page doesn't load on time, you're gonna end up wasting a lot of your marketing budget. Now the very next example, it's actually doing SEO. So let's say you have a specific budget for creating articles, outsourcing internal backlinks, and just making sure your SEO strategy is on top. If your SEO optimized blog posts do not load on time, well, that's going to impact one of the Google's metrics that rank your site, and that is Google Web Vitals. It's an algorithm that Google use to rank your page speed, your user experience, and accessibility. So if your page is hitting low on this Google metrics, that will actually impact your SEO performance. And by the way, your site speed is also connected to another metric that Google use, and that is time to value, which basically represent how quick you can provide answers to a specific search query. Now, why the scripts actually affect so much your load time? So every single browser have a thing called the browser memory, right? And what it does is when a web page loads up, your browser will access the server or will access the hosting and will request all of the files to actually display your web page. These files can be scripts, fonts, images, and anything in between. So what the browser does is goes to the servers, access these files, and then loads them up into your browser memory. So let's say that right here we do have your page load time. This is zero second right here, and let's say this is like three seconds. So when the page initially loads, what the browser will do is again, it will access all of these files. It will start to load the HTML file, then it will read other files like your CSS, and then it will start to do, let's say, the scripts. And when it reaches the scripts, what's gonna happen right here is if you have third-party scripts that the browser needs to access from a different domain. So let's say you have your intercom chat widget or you have your HubSpot form. In that case, your browser will have to stop right here and will have to go to this HubSpot server to load the widget files or to load the intercom files. And that basically stop the browser for painting. So when your browser makes this stop, this is called total blocking time. So obviously because of all of these scripts happening right here, your browser cannot fully load the web page. And that creates a problem in the user experience and how fast the user can actually access the information. So that is one of the core reasons why you need to lazy load the scripts. So now when you know how your scripts affects your load time, let's actually discuss what is the proper way to test your page load time. Best way to run a page speed test is using Google Lighthouse in your Microsoft Edge or Chromium based browsers. So the very first step is to open up your web page in incognito tab. The reason why you want to do so is you don't want your Google Lighthouse score to be impacted by extensions, widget or cache. So once you loaded up your page in private mode, just do right click and hit inspect. This will open up the dev tools and from this panel, what you have to do in the top right corner, you're gonna see this arrows, it says more tabs. If you click on more tabs, you should see Lighthouse in this menu. 
if you don't see lighthouse what you need to do is just click on these three dots hit more tools and then you should see lighthouse in this menu now i already have lighthouse as a quick shortcut in my tab so i'm going to click it now from here you want to select navigation for the mode for the device we're going to go with the mobile the reason it's super simple google now optimizes mobile traffic and mobile performance over desktop lastly for categories we're going to go with performance accessibility best practices and seo and then final of course is to click analyze page load you can see that the audit is done and we're gonna come back to this audit talk about different issues related to the scripts later on but for now there is one more option and that is using a tool called unlighthouse it's a free tool that you can use it's open source and all you have to do is open up a code editor that also have a terminal like visual code and just paste this command in your terminal now what this tool will do is it will analyze your entire website and then it will give you the lighthouse audit for every single page in details just like you can see on my screen right here we have different web pages from on lighthouse website with the score already analyzed on lighthouse is a huge time saver because in just one click you can see what specific pages from your website have a low low time or they're being affected by the core web vitals algorithm good so we know we can lazy load images on the web but how exactly do we lazy load scripts so for this solution what we're going to be using is google tag manager we're going to load all of the website scripts using google tag manager and then we're going to lazy load Google Tag Manager itself. So I have the code on my screen. Don't worry because I'm going to show you exactly what to do with this code. Let me take a moment and explain to you the two different types of scripts you can have on your website. So the very first type is critical scripts. One of these examples can be your Google Analytics. You want to make sure that you're tracking your user behavior in the very first moment the page starts to load. Another script might be preventing the user from scrolling the page if you do have a page loading animation. And the third kind of critical scripts is of course the cookie banner now the second type is non-critical and these are usually the scripts that you would run below the fold or scripts that will only fire up when the user performs specific actions are you willing to wait for your page to fully load before tracking your user or not if so then you can easily take your third-party analytics and tracking like let's say hojar or crazy ag and only load those when the user starts interacting with your web page now i'm inside the google tag manager and let's discuss about how you want to set up all of your tags now i do assume that you already have a google tag manager account if not just go in google type tag manager and quickly create a new account it's completely free now once we are inside we're going to click on tags and we already have a couple of tags let me quickly go through them and explain what they do and the very first one it's called animate on scroll and that is we're using a third-party library to animate elements on the scroll like fadings slidings and anything in between then we also have the chat widget right here uh, we have a simple script that do replace the year in the footer with the current year right because obviously with webflow that is not possible then we also have some tracking we have the facebook pixel for a lead event or lead objective then we have another facebook pixel for the schedule objective then we have some custom google analytics events here of course we have the linkedin tag uh, we have the MetaPixel, the Microsoft Clarity, which is a tool we're using for heat map and user behavior. And then some additional scripts. We have the share scripts for our blog, basically those buttons you click to share an article and the table of content that we're using on our blog post page. So you can see that what we did here is we went not only on the Webflow project settings, but we also went page by page. We took all of the non-critical scripts and we loaded them up using google tag manager and the way you do so is inside your tags page you're gonna click on this new then you're gonna give this a meaningful name make sure it's something recognizable for you and where it says tag configuration we're gonna click this box and we're gonna select custom html now in this box right here with this code editor this is where you're gonna paste your script so the final formula needs to be something like this you have the html script tag and inside this 
you're gonna paste your code. Now, it's really important that you also minify the code that you're gonna be adding right here. Go on Google, type JavaScript minifier, and the very first result should be from a website called TopTel. And you're gonna have basically two boxes. The very first one is gonna be input JavaScript, and the very second one is gonna be minified JavaScript output. And once you have your script, then click on the triggering, and then you're gonna select all pages. So this specific code runs on all pages. If you need this code to run only on a specific page, then you'll need to use something that is called expressions. If you wanna learn more about expressions, just go on the YouTube, type Google Tag Manager, page expressions, and you're gonna see how that works. Now, once you're ready with the code, all you have to do is just to click save and publish your changes. Now, here's a quick example on how your code needs to look like. So as you can see right here, I have my script tag, right? And all the code goes inside in this part right here. Yeah, so it's fully minified. Here's another example with animate on scroll. And right here, you can see that we're actually loading multiple resources. We have the CSS file right here. Then we have the JavaScript file that do make the animate on scroll to work on the page. And then the final line, it's basically the settings. Now, once you made the changes, and all you have to do is just copy this, right click, copy. Now, once you copied your container ID, all you have to do is go back to the Notion code and just replace this line right here with your actual container ID. Then we're gonna go back to our TopTel tool that minifies the JavaScript, and we're gonna paste the code right here. And once you pasted the code, all you have to do is just click on minify. I now have the minified version of my code. Again, Webflow or Google Tag Manager won't minify the code for you, so make sure you always minify third-party code you're adding to your website. So with this minified code, we're gonna click on copy to clipboard, and from here, we're ready to go inside the Webflow project settings and paste that in. Open up the Webflow project settings and navigate to the custom code. From the custom code page, we're gonna scroll all the way to the photo code, and this is where we're gonna paste our code. But before pasting, we need to add the script HTML tag because TopTel did not add it. Inside the script tag, we're just gonna do Command V and paste our code that lazy load the Google Tag Manager. Once you added the code, just hit save and publish your changes. I have on my screen our very own blog post page right and i'm gonna do a reload so you can see how many requests we are loading initially so we only have 23 requests but as soon as i'm gonna start scrolling with the page you're gonna see in this panel that more requests are being added boom and we have now 62 requests right you probably already saw that the table of contents started to pop in we also have this chat widget in the bottom right corner but basically the idea here is all of these non-critical scripts they're now lazy loaded along with the google tag manager so now let's talk about three questions that you might get. The number one is, will it mess up my metrics with the Google Analytics 4? No, it won't mess up your metrics. In fact, if you load your Google Analytics 4 from the integration panel inside your Webflow project settings, it won't break your custom events or anything you've set up with Google Analytics. Now, the second question you might have is, will it break up my site? No, it won't break up your site if you take all of your non-critical scripts and lazy load using Google Tag Manager. If you do remember, I've told you that a non-critical script is basically all of those scripts that you don't need on the initial page load. So if you have a script that you really need to run, that will actually fall into being a critical script, which you will obviously not lazy load using Google Tag Manager. And the final question is, will it work with my cookie consent banner? Yes. The script that we've implemented does not break Google Tag Manager. Instead, it loads the Google Tag Manager container ID only when the user perform any of these three actions. The user scroll the page, click on the page or tap, and finally, move the mouse over. So if you're gonna have any questions, don't be shy to ask me in the comment section below. And if you wanna stay in touch with the fresh updates on this channel, just subscribe. Chat soon.